It's Friday the 13th today in the month of March. And you're watching New Day. Good morning. Time right now is 6 a.m. And we'll begin the show with news from the president's announcement mm -hmm. last night. That's right. Everybody was waiting for it. And Metro Manila is now on lockdown. That means there will be limited movement for residents of the region. For one, a domestic land. April 12th. Coronavirus. This on COVID. After health authorities until April 14th. Over 12 million people will not be allowed to travel outside the national capital region. Here's the president's own words. Land, domestic air and domestic sea travel to and from Metro Manila shall be suspended beginning 15, 2020, March, March 15, 2020 and to end on April 14, 2020, sa alas 12, subject to the daily review by the Interagency Task Force. So, walang lumipad, ang mga travel is limited. The LRT, MRT and the Philippine National Railways will continue operations, but authorities will ensure social distancing on the trains. On Thursday night, Mr. Duterte read the recommendation sent to him by the Interagency Task Force. He says the so-called community quarantine for Metro Manila is a lockdown. Community quarantine is hereby imposed in the entire of Metro Manila and in other in other areas the LGUs are advised to abide by the following guidelines imposing localized community quarantine in the respective jurisdiction for Manila may ayaw namin gamitin yan pero Kasi takot kasi we're in lockdown. But it's a lockdown. There is no struggle of power here. Walang away dito, walang gira. It's just a matter of protecting and defending you from COVID-19. That's about it. It has nothing to do with the power of the military or the power of the police. Norm or my my power and of this guy is beside me. In the end, it's not an issue of, um, it's just an issue of uh, protecting public interest and public health. Yun lang. The president also announced class suspensions in Metro Manila will be extended until April 12. Other areas outside Metro Manila also suspended their classes. These include Capas and Ramos towns in Tarlac, Lukban, Quezon, Baguio City, Bulacan, Cavite, Rizal, parts of Laguna, Biliran Province State University, Eastern Visayas State University, and Santo Tomas in Davao del Norte. The suspension of classes in all levels in Metro Manila is hereby extended until April 12, 2020. It's almost about a month. Uh, O so walang klase, uh, pwede kayong magbakasyon dyan lang sa bahay. There's so much talk about the so-called lockdown in Metro Manila, but what does this really mean? Interior spokesman Jonathan Malaya says, quote, When a building or compound is closed for disinfecting or other purposes, that's not a lockdown. That only means that the building, compound, or place is closed and therefore we should accurately describe it as such. It's just closed. Malaya highlights the negative connotation of a lockdown. He says it's typically used to describe prisoners confined to their cells. He adds that while the Interior Department and the police are ready for such an occurrence, there is no compelling reason to implement the extreme measure just yet. He then urges the media to use the proper terms so as not to create public panic and fear. Malaya made the statements after some reports used lockdown to mean closed. Some government offices have been temporarily closed for disinfection. How will this community quarantine be actually implemented? And joining us on the phone now is Acting PNP Spokesperson, Police Major General Benigno Durana. Good morning, sir. Thanks for taking our call. 
Yes, uh, thank you, uh, for having me. Uh, sir, what is the police's role in President Duterte's order for a community quarantine? Uh, yes, uh, Ria. Uh, this morning, we'll be having our uh, final uh, uh, coordinating conference on how we can uh, detail uh, the, the enforcement, uh, uh, final point uh, in our enforcement of uh, what we call community quarantine, which uh, will start... Uh, uh, less than two days uh, from now. Uh, when we talk about community quarantine, the uh, uh, primary goal is to prevent uh, movement uh, of people, which is uh, it's actually considered as uh, uh, the host of uh, the virus. The primary aim is to prevent uh, and safeguard the health of uh, people, especially those uh, staying in Metro Manila. Uh, and likewise, uh, in the neighboring provinces or regions uh, in our country area. So, sir, does this mean that there will be uh, increased police presence at the borders of neighboring provinces and Metro Manila? Yes, uh, depending on uh, our continuing assessment, uh, definitely all points of entry and exit uh, in uh, Metro Manila will uh, be manned by our checkpoints uh, in cooperation also with the other law enforcement agencies uh, like the Amport, the Philippines, uh, and others. Uh, we have also the Marina, uh, the, the Philippine Navy, uh, etc., uh, and uh, all the health professionals no, uh, will be on call 24-7 uh, in order to ensure that uh, we can uh, uh, enforce the uh, uh, community quarantine, and at the same time uh, to make sure that uh, uh, any person that uh, will be exhibiting some symptoms will be immediately attended to by uh, medical personnel from the Department uh, of Health. What about for people who live outside Metro Manila but work inside Metro Manila? They'll be allowed to come in and out, right? Oh, well, depending on uh, the guidelines that will be issued by the Department of Labor and Employment uh, and uh, the uh, DTI, because uh, it says there that uh, the executive order says that uh, the private sector uh, will be encouraged to implement a flexible uh, work uh, time, uh, work uh, arrangements. Uh, but uh, all manufacturing, uh, retail, and services uh, businesses uh, will uh, continue. So that's why uh, the, this morning at 7 a.m. we'll be fine-tuning the protocols that and guidelines that we have uh, developed since yesterday uh, in order to uh, fully and effectively implement uh, this uh, community quarantine that will be starting March uh, 15. All right, sir. So that's uh, all starting uh, on Sunday. But what happens, for example, uh, you have somebody uh, arriving via air, but they're not from Metro Manila. They need to go home to a province like, let's say, in Bulacan. And that will be at around Sunday. Will they be allowed to go home to their home provinces? Well, before, probably, before... Uh the start of the community quarantine, definitely they'll be allowed. That's why there's a slack, uh, so to speak, uh, a transition period since last night until March uh, 15 to allow uh, the rest of uh, uh, the, those uh, not living in Metro Manila uh, to, to move no? uh, in order to, again, the, the purpose of which is to prevent and safeguard the health of not only those in Metro Manila, but also out, uh, those living outside of Metro Manila via. Right, but if they arrive in Manila after Sunday and they need to go back to their home provinces, hindi na po pwede yon. Uh, well, definitely, uh, that's uh, uh, community quarantine is already uh, imposed uh, by the time. All right, sir. Um, you mentioned that there will be checkpoints. You will be checking for people who are exhibiting symptoms. Um, we will also need to check if people actually do work in Metro Manila. On a very practical level, what is that going to look like? Because if you're going to check uh, every vehicle or even a large majority of the vehicles, that would uh, have huge effects on traffic, no? Well, uh, definitely, uh, the, the guidelines would still be uh, 
uh, issued by the uh, Department of Transportation because uh, by the time uh, land, air, and sea uh, transport uh, in and out of Metro Manila will be suspended uh, until uh, April uh, 14. So uh, definitely, if you can announce that uh, as soon as possible, uh, people will be informed that non-essential travel no, uh, uh, to and from Metro Manila will be avoided by uh, by the citizens uh, by the time. Okay, sir, so, what... Uh, go ahead. Yes, go ahead. Uh, what are the consequences? What will the PNP do to non-abiding citizens once the community quarantine is in place? Well, definitely our job is basically to maintain law and order. And uh, as much as possible, uh, based on the instruction of the president. And definitely that's uh, how we do it, that uh, we would be very polite, very uh, courteous uh, in our uh, enforcement of the community quarantine. That's why even as early as now, we are appealing to the public that let us help each other. Uh, what the government, uh, particularly the Philippine National Police, will eventually be doing is to safeguard and protect each and every one of us uh, from being uh, from contracting this uh, deadly virus. It is uh, not uh, for anything else, but for the best interest and the safety of the Filipino citizens out here. All right, the, uh, General Durana, just to clarify um, regarding the terminology. Are we using community quarantine or are we saying lockdown? And what is the difference between the two, if any? Well, uh, this is what the president said. Uh, community quarantine is nothing but the lockdown. Uh, let's, uh, let's not be coy about that. But uh, the desire, actually, of the president and the Philippine National Police, and we are appealing uh, this to the public, that not to panic, we are doing our best. Uh, to make sure that you'll be protected and your safety is ensured as we uh, implement this uh, community quarantine. No? Uh, the primary uh, consideration, other than for preventing the spread of uh, uh, the virus, is to uh, ensure calm uh, and order uh, in, in our community. Uh, again, for the best interest uh, in safety of the Filipino people. All right, thank you for your time this morning. We appreciate it. Acting PNP spokesperson, Police Major General Benigno Durana. President Duterte says the Chinese government has offered help amid the COVID-19 outbreak. In the same briefing last night, Mr. Duterte said China has managed the crisis very well. He says he will only ask for China's help if things deteriorate. You know, President Xi Jinping, for all of his goodness to us, wrote me a letter and said that he is willing to help. All we have to do is to ask. Ako ang tingin ko, maybe there will be a time if things deteriorate that I have to call on China to help. So to the Chinese government, to the people, especially to President Xi Jinping, Thank you for the consoling words, and maybe uh, I hope it would not reach to that point, but maybe uh, we will need your help. Salamat po. Saudi Arabia prohibits the entry of foreign nationals to 12 more countries in a bid to contain COVID-19. The temporary ban now covers the Philippines. However, health workers returning to Saudi Arabia from the Philippines and India are exempted. They will be evaluated upon their return. Saudi Arabia has 52 coronavirus cases. U.S. President Donald Trump announces a sweeping ban on travel into the United States. His speech on Wednesday was meant to bring clarity to a rapidly evolving situation. But Trump made several misstatements that caused confusion. His administration later stepping in to amend and clarify his comments. CNN's Joe Johns reports. President Trump ramping up his response to the coronavirus outbreak, but instead of reassuring the public, he caused more confusion than calm. Like this statement. We will be suspending all travel from Europe to the United States for the next 30 days. The new rules will go into effect Friday at midnight. There will be exemptions for Americans who have undergone appropriate screenings. 
The Department of Homeland Security quickly clarifying, assuring the travel restrictions will not apply to U.S. citizens, permanent residents, and some of their family members. The ban instead would only apply to foreign nationals. Still, this announcement blindsiding the officials of affected European countries. Several European ambassadors telling CNN they were not notified of the new policy ahead of time. The travel industry reportedly was not consulted either. Trump also blamed Europe without evidence for the rising numbers in the U.S. The European Union failed to take the same precautions and restrict travel from China and other hotspots. As a result, a large number of new clusters in the United States were seeded by travelers from Europe. Trump caused more uncertainty when he said the restriction would apply to trade. Anything coming from Europe to the United States is what we are discussing. These restrictions will also not apply to the United Kingdom. But Trump took to Twitter to clear up that statement, writing, it is very important for all countries and businesses to know that trade will in no way be affected by the 30-day restriction on travel from Europe. The restriction stops people, not goods. President Trump further jumbled the message when he addressed the health care costs associated with coronavirus. Earlier this week, I met with the leaders of health insurance industry who have agreed to waive all co-payments for coronavirus treatments, extend insurance coverage to these treatments, and to prevent surprise medical billing. A White House official later corrected the notion, saying co-payments would be waived only for coronavirus tests, not for treatments of the disease. In total, there are 127,000 cases worldwide and more than 4,700 deaths. But while the virus continues to spread, more than half of those affected have already recovered. Symptoms of coronavirus disease include the following. Fever, cough, shortness of breath, or difficulties in breathing. In worst cases, a patient may also suffer from pneumonia, severe acute respiratory syndrome, or kidney failure. There's also a 3% chance of death, but because these symptoms are very similar to other respiratory illnesses, only a test can determine if you are positive of COVID-19. However, there are steps you can take to minimize your risk of getting infected because it is spread from person to person. It is better to avoid people who are sick. To protect others, cover your mouth and nose when you cough or sneeze. The virus can also be transmitted through anything that was touched by someone infected. And so it is advisable to disinfect the objects and surfaces you touch. Avoid touching your eyes, nose and mouth since these are entry points for the virus. Wear protective clothing, especially when you're around a farm or wild animals. Wash your hands often with soap and water for at least 20 seconds and cook food thoroughly to kill any viruses and bacteria. And lastly, keep a healthy lifestyle to boost your immune system. Good morning, time right now is 619. Now let's take a look at the roads this Friday morning. It is Friday the 13th. Here are live pictures of Ed Sabay Guadalupe. The lanes headed to Shaw Boulevard are on the right side of your screens. Take a look there. Now traffic is a bit moving until the end where traffic becomes moderate. Same situation on the left side of your screens. That is southbound, headed to Magallanes, where traffic is also moving. Then on the S-Lex, let's take a look at the Villamore Northbound at Parade, a usual cho choke point here. This is a portion below the Skyway. If you are headed to Metro Manila, well, good news for you. You can expect a fast drive on this portion. As of this time, just be careful if you'll be driving. And since today is Friday, number coding is 9 and 0. If your plate ends in those numbers, you are not allowed on most major roads here in Metro Manila from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. today. We have more of today's top stories on New Day, including our weather report. Vice President Lenny Robredo weighs in on the government's plans in addressing the coronavirus pandemic. And local stocks take a beating amid the global health threat. Details and more after the break. Keep it here only on CNN Philippines News. You can trust. Good morning. This program is brought to you by... Welcome live. Thank you for joining us on Friday the 13th. Mel Moslares uh, Sr. and also okay. Ram Ambong. They're saying... Uh, na wala daw sinabi na lockdown. Sa resolution, just to be clear, sa resolution, wala naman nakalagay na lockdown. It is a community quarantine. Mm -hmm. But the president did say yesterday... Yes, uh, he said this communi 
to quarantine is a lockdown. And I just spoke to acting PNP spokesperson and he said General the same Durani. thing. He said exactly the same thing. Welcome back to New Day. The health department says three more COVID-19 patients in the Philippines have died, bringing the death toll to five. Authorities identified the latest casualty as PH6. PH6 was incubated on March 11. She died on the same day from pneumonia secondary to COVID-19. She's also a diabetic. Meanwhile, the husband of PH6, who is identified as PH5, died yesterday after developing acute kidney injury. PH5 was also diabetic like his wife and hypertensive. The fifth casualty is PH37, who died due to acute respiratory failure. The DOH also records more people testing positive for the disease. The tally is now at 52. Our Carolyn Bonkin has the details. Filipinos are added to the list of COVID-19 patients in the Philippines. Among them, a 69-year-old woman and a 26-year-old man who both didn't travel outside the country in the past month. Then the other confirmed new case is a 79-year-old man who's been to the United Kingdom. That's all of the information that we have about these new cases for now. Now about the second COVID case, uh, second COVID death. The health department confirmed that PH35 died due to severe pneumonia. She's a 67-year-old woman. Her symptoms showed up on February 29, but was only admitted in the hospital on March 5. She died before results from the RITM came out on Wednesday. She has existing medical conditions, which are hypertension and diabetes mellitus. She's admitted in Manila Doctors Hospital with her husband, who also contracted the virus. Now, both of them have no recent travel history abroad, but it's not clear yet if they got the virus from someone who came from another country or if it's through local transmission. Health Secretary Francisco Duque reminds the public the elderly and those who have underlying medical conditions are very vulnerable to this virus. Vice President Lenny Robredo urges the government to move fast to help the public cope with the rising number of coronavirus cases. Speaking last night, a few hours before the president, Robredo said concrete measures should be in place to protect frontliners and other vulnerable sectors. Nasa disaster mindset dapat tayo ngayon. Nananawagan tayo sa mga ahensya ng gobyerno, particular ang mga frontliners. Pandayin, linawin, isiwalat at ipatupad na ang mga karampatang protocols para sa mga apektado. Pilipino tayo. Sanay tayo sa sakuna. Palagi sa harap ng ganitong uring krisis din natin na ipapakita ang pagbabayanihang diwa ng ating pagkapilipino. Good morning. Time right now is 624. Christine, while everyone is talking about the government's uh, plans regarding COVID-19, many of us are also dealing with the rising temperatures as well. It's just really getting hotter. That's right, Andre. Actually, forecasters have reminded us all week long yeah. Um, to expect hotter days, mm -hmm. you know, ahead. So with that, let's take a closer look okay. at our weather forecast for today. Well, it's going to be another humid day for the country as the easterlies affect the entire nation. Metro Manila and the rest of the country will have partly cloudy skies. Pagasa also says there are chances of isolated rain showers later on today. Temperatures in Baguio City today range from 15 to 26 degrees Celsius. Metro Manila, meanwhile, will experience highs and lows of 24 to 34 degrees. Checking on Metro Manila's three-day forecast, Pagasa expects generally good weather over the weekend. Tomorrow's temperatures here in Metro Manila range from 25 to 35 degrees, while Sunday's temperatures can go up to as high as 34 degrees. Now let's take a look at today's temperatures for the rest of the country.
And now let's check on the conditions here and across Asia from the CNN World Weather Center. Hello, CNN Philippines. Tom Sater here. Good Friday to you. I know there's not a lot of traveling going on, but we're going to look at a three-day forecast for those of you that must travel. Again, our satellite imagery not showing much in the way of even passing clouds. So, again, rainfall slim to none. And, of course, in Southeast Asia, Hong Kong still has a chance in Taiwan. We'll get to that region. But our satellite imagery, at least as far as the forecast models are concerned, really not generating any rainfall. They do get a dry day in Japan, but the cloud cover will be moving into the western part of that country. Seoul 8, cold air is knocking on the door now and it's going to get much colder. Notice Vladivostok, so a, a chilly weekend. With that, however, it looks like Beijing may escape the real cold. That pool of cold air is going to slide right across the EC Sea of Japan. So again, a dry day today. There it is. Notice the colors are purple, real dark colors. That's Arctic air mass. So temperatures really tumbling even to levels that are much lower than they should be this time of year. Much of Taiwan, southern and eastern provinces of China warm up nicely. They're actually a little bit above average. But again, there's the rain rainfall and a little bit of snow, of course, with that colder air that'll be pushing across that region. Heavy rainfall, the Ryukyu Islands, most of it is offshore. I wouldn't uh, be surprised to see some rain move in most of Japan as we get in the latter part of Saturday and a Sunday. So there you have it, Taiwan, 20 degrees with cloudy skies. The winds have been picking up there as well. Hong Kong, fair skies. We'll look at their three-day forecast as well. Most of the cloud cover inland, as you see there, quite heavy. Shanghai is into the rain today. I think they'll be drying up nicely in the next couple of days. But again, we're not looking at much in the way of activity. So if you do get a little bit of a breeze, enjoy it because the numbers are going up as far as the mercury is concerned. Still have that smoke problem in northern areas of Taiwan. Take a look at this, 40 degrees. These numbers seem to be going up degree by degree almost every day now. So the dry season becoming quite oppressive. Getting a break from the rain in Kuala Lumpur over towards Singapore. But again, this is a, a better looking picture we've seen in some regions. Valley looks pretty good in areas off toward the east. Three day forecast, Beijing gets the sunny skies all weekend long. Temperatures, oh, they're doable, not bad at 16. Shanghai's best chance of rain today. They dry up for Saturday and Sunday. Hong Kong looks pretty good. Just a little increase of cloud cover for Saturday, but should remain dry. In Bangkok, notice the numbers. They get a little bit better if you want to call 31 better than 36, which it is for the most part. Singapore's best chance of rain on Sunday. Scattered showers in Jakarta. So here are your numbers as we, as we end out the work week. Again, Manila, here we go. Your temperatures continue to inch upwards. 35 degrees with blue skies and not much of a chance of rainfall. I know we all need it, but try to do the best you can. Enjoy the weekend. Stay happy and stay healthy. And I'll see you again on Monday. Back to you. That was meteorologist Tom Sater from the CNN World Weather Center. We can expect hot and dry weather this Friday. Please keep yourselves hydrated and be ready for chances of isolated rain showers later on today. Over in Florida, U.S., a dangerous drag race ends in a shocking way. And firefighters go all out to rescue a little boy's teddy bear. Check this out with CNN's Jeremy Rowe. A security camera captured a pair of cars drag racing down a Florida neighborhood street, and it did not end well. One of the vehicles hit a ditch and went airborne, landing hood first upside down. The top of the car was smashed completely down to the doors. I can't believe that somebody came out of there alive. Emergency crews and police swarmed the scene quickly. Two teens were reportedly in the vehicle when it crashed. An eyewitness told local reporters one of the teens suffered a couple of broken ribs. Hey, here's a clunky transition. Watch Florida firefighters pull out all the stops to rescue a little boy's teddy bear. The bear, named Rockstar Freddy, had been thrown onto the roof of a school. Its owner, Ashton, was reportedly losing sleep over the incident, so the school brought in Cape Coral police and fire officials to rescue Rockstar Freddy. Responders ascended atop the department's cherry picker and the daring rescue unfolded on the school's roof. I'm probably making it sound more exciting than it actually was, but the operation was a success and the kindergartner was reunited with his beloved bear. It was a gesture that was heartfelt, selfless, and definitely not a questionable use of valuable taxpayer money. For Take a Look at This, I'm Jeremy Roth. You're watching New Day this Friday morning. Hoarders, beware. The government says trouble awaits those who are found compulsively buying basic goods during the crisis. We'll have details after the break. Stay tuned. This program is brought to you by... Next time on The Final... So it sounds like if you've been hoarding toilet paper, oh, you're going to be in trouble. Why? Because you are a crappy person. Or the a what? Travel bag?
from your... Why, why are you going to be in trouble if you hoard toilet paper? Here, hold on. Okay. Okay. Got it. Stay have you hoard anything? I think that's <laughs> like... Yeah, 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 yeah. Well... Of course. Of course. Good morning and welcome back. I'm Ria Tanwat Cotrillo. Our top story. President Rodrigo Duterte has put in place travel restrictions to and from Metro Manila after health authorities raised the highest COVID-19 alert level. The president says the region is now placed under community quarantine from March 14 until April 14. Over 12 million people will not be allowed to travel outside the national capital region following the suspension of land, domestic air and domestic sea travel. The LRT, MRT and the Philippine National Railways will continue operations, but authorities will ensure social distancing on the trains. On Thursday night, Mr. Duterte read the recommendation sent to him by the Interagency Task Force. He says the so-called community quarantine for Metro Manila is a lockdown. For Manila, may ayo namin gamitin yan, pero... Kasi takot kasi we're in lockdown. But it's a lockdown. There is no struggle of power here. Walang away dito, walang gira. It's just a matter of protecting and defending you from COVID-19. That's about it. It has nothing to do with the power of the military or the power of the police. Norm or my my power and of this guy is beside me. In the end, it's not an issue of, um, it's just an issue of uh, protecting public interest and public health. Quezon City is one of the areas with the most number of COVID-19 cases in Metro Manila. And to tell us more about the local government's response, we now talk to Mayor Joy Belmonte. Good morning, Mayor. Thanks for taking our call. Uh, good morning, Ria. Good morning to all of the listeners and televiewers. Um, Mayor, your reaction to President Duterte's order for a community quarantine here in Metro Manila? Well, first, um, the president keeps stressing that he's doing this for the good of the people, for the welfare of the people, for the immediate stoppage of the spread of COVID-19. And we are with one with him in that regard. In fact, um, many countries have been doing much more, um, I would say, aggressive um, and drastic measures. I, I was expecting actually even more, no? but uh, it, it, I think what he is proposing is very reasonable and very doable. And um, while there are some gray areas in in areas like, uh, for example, transportation or entry and exit, travel, etc., uh, I was uh, I was. Uh, made to understand that today the cabinet secretaries will be meeting to thresh out these gray areas and to come up with guidelines, and we are awaiting those guidelines. In the meantime, the local government will today be crafting guidelines that are applicable to uh, our city and our barangay. So um, I believe that uh, uh, many of these things we have already been doing, in fact, no. what the president is asking is just uh, for us to make these even more intensive. So, for example, if you used to be quarantined because of your close contact with a certain person. Now, um, we would like to trace every single person that individual has been in contact with in the past two weeks, probably. And then all of those persons now shall be under quarantine. And then, of course, the another uh, uh, important aspect that he brought up is the issue of social distancing. And we are looking towards closing many of the public uh, community centers in our city where people tend to congregate uh, as a... As a precautionary measure. So these are some of the things we're looking at uh, in, in the area of uh, implementing you know, EO at the local level. All right. And when will you start implementing those, Mayor? Well, I understand implementation is Sunday uh, for everybody. And, uh, of course, today is the day that everybody will be meeting about these things. So hopefully we finish at the local level by today and uh, me uh, memorandum out or local EO version out uh, by the end of the day. So, so that uh, that at least there's an ample time for our barangays to prepare because I, I also understand that the barangay plays a very big role. I'm, I'm very worried, of course, uh, with the situation in our informal sector settlements you know, because the, you know that people live very closely together there. They're, they have very little space between them and, and we, ha we want to protect them uh, as much as possible as well. And, and we want to see how we can implement social distancing in these areas. 
Right, that, that uh, is a big problem. How many confirmed cases uh, do you have now in Quezon City? Well, actually, we are not that much compared to the fact that our size is so much bigger than all the other cities. No? Um, considering we are 25% of the metropolis, we have uh, six confirmed cases. Six confirmed. And how many uh, persons under investigation, Mayor? Persons under investigation, I would say less than maybe less than 40, about 40. And those that are, are quite serious, meaning those uh, that are uh, exhibiting symptoms, are all confined already. And those that are not, those that have come into co close contact only with positive persons, they are all on mandatory home quarantine at the moment, awaiting the uh, results uh, to come out from the RITM. Well, according to the resolution that the president read last night, local governments can impose um, community quarantine pag lumampas ng dalawang cases. What's the QC government's uh, plan on this? Will you uh, be implementing that? Will you um, lock down several barangays if the need arises? Well, I think according to the, uh, the declaration of the president, if two or, more, or two or more barangays exhibit two cases each coming from different households, if I'm not mistaken, um, then you can implement a citywide lockdown. Um, I, I think that I will probably appeal this to um, the DILG because, of course, the city is so big. There are 3 million people. There are 142 barangays. Um, and I think that it's a little bit unreasonable to lock down the entire city if only two barangays would exhibit two cases uh, um, from different households. No, but but uh, let's let's see. Let's let's, let's uh, wait for further uh, consultations with our people and our barangay officials on that. All right. Lastly, Mayor, reminders for your constituents. Well, for my constituents, I guess I would just like to uh, remind them of exactly what the president uh, mentioned uh, earlier or last night. In uh, that this is not a, a lockdown, uh, uh, but this is a co community quarantine, meaning that we are encouraged to stay at home as much as possible. We are encouraged to work from the house if we can, and the city government will be uh, crafting guidelines to that effect to, to lessen the number of people going to city hall, uh, because, of course, that that contributes greatly um, to, to po the probable spread of the virus. Uh, we are working on a four-day work week, in fact, uh, for many of our employees. Um, and we would like to uh, tell the people to please observe the social distancing uh, guideline of our president, which is one meter away from your next uh, companion. When you have meetings, make them small if necessary, or if it's possible to do them by phone or teleconferencing, do that. Um, and. Uh, the, the city also should not worry about issues like the lack of food because we have just confirmed with with our, our national government that there will be food available, um, that there will be transport, albeit very limited, and, and there will be checkpoints. So let us just be tolerant of these things. Let's avoid complaining. Let's just follow because, like the president said, this is for the good of all. And I think that this is the time for compliance rather than for, for ranting about uh, these things. But, but in the meantime, assurance, the people of Quezon City, the local government is prepared our hospitals are prepared our health workers are prepared our, our health centers are prepared and our barangays are prepared so if they have symptoms mm -hmm. um, I encourage all of them to just come forward not hide these symptoms um, if they know of anybody they have been in contact with who has been tested positive come forward tell us about it it is important that information flows freely here that it, everything is transparent so that yes. we can act at the soonest possible time. All right. Thank you so much for your time this morning. That was Quezon City Mayor Joy Belmonte. Slower activity in trade and tourism due to the coronavirus pandemic will take its toll on the country's economic growth for 2020. But the government insists it will stick to its current infrastructure plans. Sandra Shalsita has the details. The administration's Build, Build, Build program will move forward as planned even with revenues expected to drop as coronavirus fears hound local markets and tourism. The National Economic and Development Authority expects this year's economic growth to fall between 5.5 to 6.5 percent, assuming the outbreak lasts until June. This is lower than the government's target. This comes as travel restrictions and lower imports from China cause a slump in overall economic activity. Social Economic Planning Secretary Ernesto Perña says the tourism and trade sectors will take the biggest hit. This could result in foregone value added or potential output loss of uh, 93 
to 187 billion. But finance chief Sunny Dominguez remains confident the government can still fund its big ticket infrastructure projects. Despite these uh, difficulties, we are not contemplating a reduction in our expenditures. Our uh, build, build, build will go uh, full blast, and uh, so will all other programs of the government. Dominguez expects tax collections to fall by at least 91 billion pesos, which government will augment with more borrowing. He adds the wider budget deficit would be financial given the country's investment grade credit rating that enables the government to borrow money at cheaper rates. Our uh, credit rating is uh, quite robust and uh, we, will, we don't expect any difficulty in covering a potential deficit uh, that uh, might occur uh, because of the uh, drop in economic activity so uh, expected drop in economic activity because of this coronavirus. The government plans to borrow a record 1.4 trillion pesos this year to finance the budget deficit, 75% of which will come from domestic sources and 25% from foreign sources. The government plans to spend 4.2 trillion pesos this year for its various programs to develop the country. 1.2 billion pesos is earmarked for infrastructure projects, including the North-South commuter railway system, Metro Manila subway and the rehabilitation of the Metro Rail Transit Line 3. Despite difficulties the coronavirus poses, the government remains steadfast with their goal to usher in the golden age of infrastructure in President Duterte's time. Sandra Chalcita, CNN Philippines. Children across the United States are staying home from school due to the coronavirus. As the virus spreads, it's the new normal for many American students. CNN's Omar Jimenez reports. And then from the color change, they can see that the pH has changed. How do you teach chemistry to an empty classroom? Randy Hybers is having to get used to that reality. If we're going to do this for more than a couple of weeks, this is going to be isolating, yeah. But human connection was through the interface. I was very impressed with that. His so students see now see him through a computer screen. This one you're going to need to know. This is the silver nitrate. Um, and it's a familiar story throughout the region. For tens of thousands of students here in the Seattle area, school is now happening at home. And when you step inside one of those homes, what you see is the new reality of education personified in a family. We're multiplying it by a float. A mother who's a teacher teaching from home. A father also with the school district helping out at home. Welcome to our e-learning. And a daughter, elementary school age, going through as normal a school day as you can from her living room. It's kind of weird, but also fun. I didn't really have that much classwork to do today, but I still had some. Normally at school, I would have seen all six of my classes um, for 50 minute periods and also had a prep period. So very different at home. Demolitors are part of the Seattle area North Shore School District, among the first places in the country to make a deliberate move to online learning because of the rapidly spreading coronavirus. It was sort of a convergence of data points that eventually led to increasing absences and finally 26 of our schools having the impact of some exposure or another. Seattle's public schools are among those that won't be able to go forward with online learning. Instead, having to suspend classes altogether for at least two weeks. It's not all 53,000 students have online access or a device, a computer. So if we can't provide that online learning for all of our students, then we can't. It also means school lunches are being made available for pickup or delivery to households who depend on it. All contingency plans set into motion amidst a global outbreak. We'll make it through. Question now, for how long? We'll switch to false. Good morning, time right now is quarter to seven. Now onto our roads once again this Friday morning. Here are live pictures now of the Alabang Toll Plaza from the Skyway. If you are headed to Metro Manila, taking this route, well, right now you can expect occasional delays uh, here and there approaching the toll gates. But don't worry, after that, it will be a fast drive 
for you. We have more stories and conversations here on New Day. Mauling, which is considered a favorite pastime of many Filipinos, is also taking a hit due to the coronavirus pandemic. And later in the program, we get to know how malls are protecting their customers in times like these. Stay tuned to CNN Philippines News You Can Trust. Good morning. We're here at Ground Zero in the Tonin Mountain Province. The official canvassing of votes here in Marawi has already started. Typhoon Rosita is now showing its full strength here in Santiago City. The military can give us a deadline as to when they can finish the fight. George Kailis, Sin and Philippines. Establishments like malls are imposing stricter measures in an effort to prevent further spread of coronavirus. Here with us to, this morning to tell us more about the protocols is SM Super Malls President Stephen Tan. Good morning. Thanks for being here, Stephen. Good morning, James. Wow. Uh, a lot of questions out there, especially to do with, with some of our malls with the scare of coronavirus. Um, I'll firstly ask, how is the foot traffic right now? Well, it, well, it's it's very normal that you know it will definitely drop a little. It did drop around maybe around 10, 10, 10 15 percent. The mm -hmm. footfall has dropped, but um, we see this is not going to be. This is an knee-jerk reaction. No? So um, l l the past few days have been, you know, slow, but we see that once everything is in place, or you know, you have all the pre precautionary measures in in place, that people see that it's a safe place to go, they'll 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 come back. I mean, life has to go on, right? Yes, I correct. Mean, I think the key message is probably if you can avoid unnecessary interactions, by all means, do mm -hmm. so. But there is still day-to-day -day things that we have to consider. Um, groceries, for example. What are some of those measures that you mentioned that uh, SM Supermalls have taken to assure customers that well, they're safe? as early as late January, you know, we have already um, have alcohols by all, by all the entrances. And then when you enter the mall, we have thermal scanning. Mm -hmm. If you register then, it was 37.6. Now, if you register 37.6, we ask you go to, we ask you, we ask the customer to go to the nearest hospital. But uh, as of yesterday, we lo we've lowered it down to 37.3. We also disinfect our malls. Now we have a sanitation crew that goes around, you know, uh, sanitizing handrails, ATMs, escalator handrails, elevator buttons. And every evening, we really fully sanitize our, our malls. Now we hire professional. Um, we have a contractor that really goes around heavily mis misting our, our, our malls, no? But um, in all our toilets also, we sanitize it in every 15, 20 minutes. So there's a lot of sanitation, sanitizing that we're doing. I've noticed that, uh, I was there yesterday, and I noticed that uh, in Mega Mall, you, you actually have people, like I said, standing with the spray bottles. These are not just machines. Yes. And it makes a difference, doesn't it? I mean, I noticed, I was just observing from afar how people tend to, when there's another human offering it, yes. they tend to be more receptive That's to it true. rather than if it's an inanimate object. We saw that before. Initially, it was we put uh, alcohol bottles, no? mm -hmm. pumps, no? um, and um, maybe three out of you know, 10 would do it, but mm -hmm. you know, the rest of the seven won't. So we, we it, uh, since last week, we said, Let's encourage really people to really uh, sanitize their hands when they it's, it's safer. So we deployed all this uh, san, um, like uh, some crew, no, mm -hmm. really pumping. Also, it would probably protect against enter. hoarding, the bug because if it was no, I'm just kidding. But speaking <laughs> of hoarding, okay, it is a serious issue. This this panic buying. Mm -hmm. um, there is no reason to panic buy. There's right? no reason. We have enough stocks for everyone. We replenish all our supermarkets mm -hmm. every evening. So if you go there in the morning, it's really fully you know, replenished. No? So uh, there's really no need for panic buying. Yeah, and I noticed that you've only put rations on one product so far. Only alcohol. alcohol. That's down to two bottles? Three, 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 bottles, three bar bottles per person. Mm -hmm. And that's just to, th there's really no reason to, to panic about it, but this is just to keep it into perspective. I know this is probably, some people had the question, if it's uh, for a company, uh, do they get a bigger allowance? Do they have to show a PO? 
or something if people are buying for a company? Uh, no, we really uh, ration it per person. Mm -hmm. So we, we do not have that in place yet for company to, to buy bulk. No? Anyway, your companies mm -hmm. would go direct yes, if, yes. with a PO. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, are there other efforts that you wish to impose in the coming days or weeks that you want to share with, with people out there? Um, well, in our workforce, mm -hmm. we have, um, as, uh, since the announcement last night, we have already um, implemented work from home or work in the nearest malls. We have a lot of malls all over, you know, so they don't really have to travel that far to go to, like for example, a lot of our personnel are from, uh, in the head office, uh, lives in Cavite. So we have a lot of malls in Cavite that they could just work from, from, from their nearest malls. Um, well, we have, um, for the time being, canceled uh, our three-day sale in Metro Manila, five of our malls. We, 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 we cancel a lot of the social gatherings that, um, that, that, that we have in our malls for the time being. Yeah. So once again, it, it's all about just keeping it down to the necessary interactions yes. because life still must go on. It has to go on. In, in, in many ways, I think the fear out there is, uh, it's the fear and the panic will cause far more harm than the actual virus. Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen in your experience any kind of behavior like this before? Well, we've seen some, but nothing like this, no? Mm -hmm. um, well, we've, you, we had Ondoy, we had, you know, the Taal volcano eruption, but nothing like this. Nothing like mm -hmm. this. But once again, let's just recap. It's about practicing good hygiene. Yes. It's a pra practicing social distancing. So this mm -hmm. is why we're this way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's also about just remaining calm. Yes. Just remain calm. This will be handled properly, but it needs our cooperation. Thank you very much, SM Supermalls President. Just One more thing, stop fake news. <laughs> oh, stop yes, of course, stop fake, fake news. news. Yeah, there's a lot of them around. Um, um, you know, you have to check the authenticity of the news before you post. Absolutely. It just takes a little bit of time to just double check with a credible news source. There are also some sites dedicated to some fake news uh, that you can check. Like I, I go to Snopes.com, yes. uh. always tells me if there's, that deals with mostly international stuff. So, Mr. Stephen Tan, this is how we do Thank it. Thank you so much, well. James. Bye bye. New Day has more stories for you this morning. Can we finally use the COVID 19 test kits developed by Filipino scientists? and actress Heart Evangelista keeping in style amid the coronavirus pandemic. Details are next. Stay with us here on CNN Philippines. You're here to talk about the crisis in democracy, not just... No, but it's really, for me, the, the biggest threat is to the seniors. Yeah, right. Because it's, it's like it's, even in the states, nursing homes, they're, they're also yes. unlocked that you're not allowed to. Uh Coronavirus test kits developed by Filipino scientists from UP are now one step closer to becoming available to the public. They now have approval, but scientists ask for a little more time as the test kits still need validation in the field. Tristan Odalo tells us more. Challenging times ahead as countries race against time to contain the coronavirus disease or COVID-19 pandemic. Here at home, health officials raise concern on limited testing kits, but Filipino scientists may have found the solution. So pare-pareho po yung starting point ng lahat ng nagdevelop ng technology na ito sa buong mundo. The Food and Drug Administration has green-lighted the test kit developed by University of the Philippines scientists as they deal with the urgency to meet the demand to test more people because of the pandemic. Lahat yan kailangan pa ulit-ulit mong gagawin, hindi lang isang beses, kundi isang daang beses. After securing regulatory approval, the test kits will undergo field validation study. This means that select hospitals with infectious disease capability will use the test kits for at least a week. I know we need it very badly, but we have the moral responsibility to make sure that the technology that's putting out there na paggawa ng Pinoy para sa buong mundo ang kalidad. Hospitals in Metro Manila, Northern Luzon, Cebu, and Davao will be part of the study. Kunti pa pong pasensya para lang matapos itong validation. 
There will be two test components after a patient tests positive for COVID-19. The sample will be sent for DNA sequencing to determine the coronavirus type. Yun yung magsasabi kung anong type of strain or kung saan galing siya, saan siya, nagka-cluster, um, sino yung anong type kung yung virus bagaling sa Wuhan ay sobrang kapareho ng meron tayo. Health experts say should the test kit validation succeed, professionals or hospitals shall decide on who will get tested. There are 6,000 kits on stock and 600 testing kits can be produced every week. Hindi po ito parang pregnancy test na iuwi niyo sa bahay at itest niyo, no? Demand remains strong for more testing kits used in detecting coronavirus disease or COVID-19 in patients. The locally made kits can be cheaper and could provide quicker turnaround results. The locally made kits still await approval from the World Health Organization, but Filipino scientists insist that they could be at par with international standards. Tristan Udalo, CNN Philippines. Amid the panic caused by the coronavirus pandemic, actress and local fashion icon Heart Evangelista is facing the global health threat with style. In a series of Instagram stories on Wednesday, Heart showed herself styling her own face mask with, well, wait for it, Chanel and Hermes ribbons. She even said, quote, we are making ourselves fashionably safe. The model actress says that life goes on as she has to attend public engagements amid developments on the country's COVID-19 cases. Mahal na mask yan, Hermes, eh. Well, several U.S. late-night talk shows are doing away with studio audiences over coronavirus concerns. The Late Show with Stephen Colbert and The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon last week, Tonight with John Oliver and Late Night with Seth Meyers will all tape without audiences. These programs are shot in New York City. They join shows that tape on the West Coast, like Wheel of Fortune and Jeopardy. The two game shows earlier stopped admitting live audiences. No word yet from Los Angeles-based programs like Jimmy Kimmel Live and The Late Late Show with James Corden. Broadway shows in New York have suspended all performances. The move is an effort to stop the spread of the coronavirus. The Broadway League says it made the decision under the direction of Governor Andrew Cuomo. Performances should be back the week of April 13th. The league says ticket holders should contact their ticket outlet for refunds and exchanges. You're watching New Day. We'll have more on today's top stories here and from around the world. Stay tuned after the break, only here at the CNN Philippines. If you're a fashion <clears throat> icon, there you go. Then you want to make so a you statement. can actually make your own. Because I haven't bought a mask, can I make my own mask? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? I know. The parents were made. Good mask, new heart. I know some parents. N95, ba yon? Ano yon? Nene, yon, ba yon? No, I, I don't you know. Can, may, you ano, can make your own, right? I know some people who made a mask. Pano surgical mask lang? Hindi, may may Lagi ako N95 Gucci. filters sa loob. Yeah. Now don't ask me where to buy an N95 filter, but I know oh, some people who made that. You get me one, that. and then lagi mo ng brand. Anong brand gusto mo? Gucci. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, but, but that, that's good. I mean, if I can actually make my own mask. Yeah, yeah, because we can't find it anywhere. Yeah, right? No style. alcohols in some areas except Andre in his pocket, which is good. <laughs> A very good. <laughs> <laughs> I have germophobic. You have what? I have alcohol inside my body. <laughs> <laughs> It is Friday the 13th today in the month of March. And you're watching New Day. Time right now, exactly 7 a.m. Well, the president announced last night Metro Manila is now on lockdown. Mm -hmm. And what does that mean? That means there will be limited movements for residents of the region. Yes, for one, domestic land, air, and water travels will be restricted. That's beginning on Sunday. That's right, James. Classes have also been suspended until April 12th. The president has also canceled work in the executive branch, all of these because of COVID-19. The health department late last night also announced that the new coronavirus 
has killed three more people, and that brings the number of fatalities in the Philippines to five. And throughout the show, we'll be bringing you the latest on COVID-19. Good morning. I'm James Deacon. Glad you can join us today. I'm Andre Felix. Welcome to the show. I'm Christine Jacobson. Dejas. And I'm Rieta Nwatko Trillo. You're watching New Day on CNN Philippines. President Rodrigo Duterte has put in place travel restrictions to and from Metro Manila after health authorities raised the highest COVID-19 alert level. The president says the region is now placed under community quarantine from March 15 until April 14. Over 12 million people will not be allowed to travel outside the national capital region. Here's the president in his own words. Land, domestic air and domestic sea travel to and from Metro Manila shall be suspended beginning 15, 2020, March, March 15, 2020, and to end on April 14, 2020, sa alas 12, subject to the daily review by the Interagency Task Force. So, Walang lumipad, ang mga travel is limited. The LRT, MRT and the Philippine National Railways will continue operations, but authorities will ensure social distancing on the trains. On Thursday night, Mr. Duterte read the recommendation sent to him by the Interagency Task Force. He says the so-called community quarantine for Metro Manila is a lockdown. Community quarantine is hereby imposed in the entire of Metro Manila. And in other, in other areas, the LGUs are advised to abide by the following guidelines, imposing localized community quarantine in the respective jurisdiction. For Manila, may... Ayon namin gamitin yan, pero kasi takot kasi we lockdown. But it's a lockdown. There is no struggle of power here. Walang away dito, walang gira. It's just a matter of protecting and defending you from COVID-19. That's about it. It has nothing to do with the power of the military or the power of the police, norm or my, my power and of this guy is beside me. In the end, it's not an issue of, it's just an issue of uh, protecting public interest and public health. Yun lang. The president also announced class suspensions in Metro Manila will be extended until April 12. Other areas outside Metro Manila also suspended their classes. These include Capas and Ramos towns in Tarlac, Lucban, Quezon, Baguio City, Bulacan, Cavite, Rizal, parts of Laguna, Biliran Province State University, Eastern Visayas State University, and Santo Tomas in Davao del Norte. Police officials will meet today to fine-tune the guidelines of the community quarantine in Metro Manila. But what happens to those who work in Metro Manila but live in the nearby provinces? Here's what Acting PNP Spokesperson Police Major General Benigno Durana told me earlier in the program. For uh, the start of uh, the community quarantine, definitely they'll be allowed. That's why there's a slack, uh, so to speak, uh, a transition period since last night until March uh, 15 to allow uh, the rest of the, those uh, not living in Metro Manila uh, to, to move no? uh, in order to, again, the, the purpose of which is to prevent and safeguard the health of not only those in Metro Manila, but also out, uh, those living outside of Metro Manila via. Right, but if they arrive in Manila after Sunday and they need to go back to their home provinces, hindi na po pwede yon. Uh, well, definitely, uh, that's... Uh, uh, Community quarantine is already 
uh, imposed uh, by the time. President Duterte says the Chinese government has offered to help amid the COVID-19 outbreak. In the same briefing last night, Duterte said China has managed the crisis very well. He says he will only ask for China's help if things deteriorate. You know, President Xi Jinping, for all of his goodness to us, wrote me a letter and said that he is willing to help. All we have to do is to ask. Ako ang tingin ko, maybe there will be a time if things deteriorate that I have to call on China to help. So, to the Chinese government, to the people, especially to President Xi Jinping, thank you for the consoling words and maybe uh, I hope it would not reach to that point but maybe uh, we will need your help. Salamat po. Saudi Arabia prohibits the entry of foreign nationals to 12 more countries in a bid to contain COVID-19. The temporary ban now covers the Philippines. However, health workers returning to Saudi Arabia from the Philippines and India are exempted. They will be evaluated upon their return. Saudi Arabia has 52 coronavirus cases. In total, there are 127,000 cases worldwide and more than 4,700 deaths. But while the virus continues to spread, more than half of those affected have already recovered. In sports, Utah Jazz big man Rudy Gobert finally speaks about his coronavirus diagnosis on social media. The All-Star Center has issued a public apology on Instagram. Gobert says, quote, at the time, I had no idea I was even infected. I was careless and make no excuse. Gobert also says he hopes his story will serve as a warning, adding everyone should take this seriously. Gobert also promises that he will do whatever he can to help in the efforts against the coronavirus. We have yet to know how Gobert exactly contracted the disease, but take a look at this. CNN has obtained footage of Gobert seemingly touching all the microphones at a press conference. And in Another NBA player admits he tested positive for the coronavirus. Utah Jazz star Donovan Mitchell took to Instagram to address concerns over his diagnosis. Mitchell says, quote, hopefully people can continue to educate themselves and realize that they need to behave responsibly, both for their own health and for the well-being of those around them. The Jazz organization earlier revealed two of their players tested positive for COVID-19, but it did not reveal their identities. The NBA has suspended the season until further notice. The league says they will use the break to determine its next steps. The NBA community weighs in on the suspension on social media. On Twitter, Orlando Magic player Evan Fournier says, quote, was just on the phone with Rudy Gobert. He is doing good. He also calls on everyone not to panic. Lakers superstar, the King, LeBron James, also speaks up on the issue. LeBron describes 2020 so far as, quote, a rough three months. But he reminds everyone to stay safe amid the coronavirus threat. And three-time champ Steph Curry also calls on everyone to take action. Curry writes, quote, basketball will be back at some point. But right now, protect yourself and stay safe out there. As major sports events here and abroad get called off, CNN and Philippines will temporarily stop airing our sports programs. We will realign our resources to strengthen our reported reportage on the coronavirus pandemic. But we will continue to bring your daily sports fix on regular newscasts. We'll keep you updated on when Sports Desk will return on our air. Time right now is 7.09. Let's do another quick road check this Friday morning. Now here are live pictures of the Naia X. And if you have a flight to catch, you're planning to go to the airport, headed towards terminals to 1, 2, and 3. Well, great news. Traffic here is green and go. Not much vehicles passing through. Amid growing coronavirus fears, it's important to watch out for your health and be extra careful of your surroundings. CNN's Reed Binion has tips on how to stay healthy on planes. An airline cabin can double as a flying petri dish when not maintained properly. 
The enclosed space, recirculated air, and large numbers of people make planes prime breeding grounds for bacteria. The tray table, the place where passengers rest their food, was by far the most contaminated surface tested. It was followed by the overhead air vent, the lavatory flush button, and the seat belt buckle. So what can travelers do to help fend off illness above cruising hours? Carry antibacterial wipes and hand sanitizer. Wipe down tray tables, seat belt buckles, armrests, and seat back pockets when you sit down. Hydrate. Because the air in the plane's cabin is recirculated, it contains less humidity than most people are used to. Choose a window seat. People who sit by the window have the smallest risk of infection because they have the least contact with other passengers. For today's Health Minute, I'm Reed Binion. You're watching New Day. Later, New Day will sit down with photographer Christelle Fleisch and she will talk about her exhibit featuring mothers. Back after a short break, keep it right here. CNN Philippines. Next time on The Final Pitch. The time has come to now decide on your individual picks. We're interested in this property, but we're not interested in the business. It's really amazing how the, our industry has really evolved. So you don't think it's gonna work? I, I don't think it's right yet. Most of it are, I think, overvalued. But there's certainly a potential for it to grow. Let's do this. This is exciting. They were all amazing, but unfortunately, that was your final pitch. Filipino cuisine is something that you have to search for. I want to make it. I want to go home and make it. I want to bring back all the regional knowledge that I learned from traveling here. Going to the stores was very eye-opening. I always tell people, the experience is more important to me than just the actual flavor sometimes. I am very proud to be a Filipino. Welcome back to New Day. President Duterte insists this lockdown, if and when this takes effect in Metro Manila, is not tantamount to martial law. He adds this is just for everyone's safety from the coronavirus. Hindi ito martial law. It is not a martial law. It's not even uh, something extraordinary. But what is sought, what is sought to be solved here is the, again, walang iba except to fight the virus and to exact compliance. Mothers striving for a better future. Now that's a theme of a documentary photography exhibition by photographer Christelle Fritsch. To tell us more about this endeavor, we're now joined in the studio by Christelle herself. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning, this Christine. Morning. Thank you for having okay, me here. So I'm holding this. You do have this out, but we do understand um, you do have an exhibit. So tell us more yes. about this, how you, you came to make this exhibit and meet these wonderful women and how you know they started talking about their lives. Yes, so Mothers Striving for a Better Future is a photography documentary about six hardworking mothers from Tondo. They became bag makers and um, entrepreneurs from with the support of Bless the Children Foundation and uh, the social enterprise Not a Daydream. It's a very successful story and uh, it's a beautiful example of the empowerment of women, especially with a deprived background. Okay, so le let's, let's break it up a little bit. You were actually, it, it just ha fell on your lap. So, mm -hmm. much to, so much to say. I mean, you were just busy um, taking pictures of this beautiful bag for their website and, yes. and everything else, right? So these are the bags. So I was actually doing the pictures for the commercial of it. And um, I wanted to know more about the bags, where mm -hmm. they come from, who's doing them. And they are made in Tondo by those uh, amazing women who actually are from the streets. They come from the province full of hope in Manila and they end up uh, in a slum where they don't have any skill. So in order to send their children to school, they came across this foundation who could teach them sewing mm -hmm. and the social enterprise as well to empower them 
And uh, now they became entrepreneurs. They're choosing their fabric. And, and with that, okay, so, so you met uh, how many women? Five, five? Six. Six women. And you started following them around, getting to know them a little bit better. What was the one thing that you discovered about them or you were so impressed uh, by them and, you know, wanted to share really their story? I was really impressed by the fact that actually they, they live in such a difficult surrounding. I mean, to overcome that, it's huge. They sometimes don't even know if they can have access to water in the evening. Mm -hmm. uh, the strengths that they have to deploy to send their children to school and have a sustainable income is huge. Mm -hmm. So I was really uh, shocked by that. Yeah. Uh, they were willing to open the doors and I've spent with them four months uh, going there three, four times a week. And uh, well, the whole story is more a testimony about, mm -hmm. about who they are. Okay, and with that, I mean, in order to make their stories come alive, we need somebody like you. Mm. You know, the photographer, mm. tell me about that. What is it that you love about being a photographer and how you fell in love with it? Yeah, so for me, it was really the, the, the drive for me was to give them a voice. Because as you, as you mentioned, I mean, without media, uh, without someone um, giving this link, they, they, won't, they don't have access to that. They, they, they barely don't go out of Tondo. They, they don't have, they cannot afford it. Um, now we bring this story to another level. We, we also want to highlight the fact that it's 100% made by Filipino with Filipino fabric. Mm -hmm. So we support fully the hand weaver as well from Ilocos. And, and I, I think it's a beautiful joint venture. And of course, uh, they live through your eyes. Yes. <laughs> Pretty much how that is. Okay, so there was supposed to be an exhibit, but with all of these yes. things happening, um, it got pushed back. So tell us more about the exhibit and, you know, when will it finally be? So the exhibit was supposed to be end of March uh, for Women's Month mm -hmm. uh, in uh, Manila House in BGC. However, yes, it has been pushed to, to beginning of May, hopefully, uh, when the yeah. virus will clear the air. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So sometime in May. Uh, sometime mean, in May. Meanwhile, um, you have this book out and yes. you, you will be selling it during the exhibit or is it already out? Can it it's be? already out. I mean, we're selling the bags mm -hmm. um, to many retailers okay. uh, in uh, Manila. Uh, SMORA uh, has one um, okay. retailer, Frank and Friends. Um, and the, the books are going to be presented as well. Well, wonderful. Well, we look forward to your next project. And of Thank course, you. we look forward first to this. Thank you. To being able to, to witness it and see your wonderful work. I mean, the pictures are astounding. I mean, this is definitely uh, one exhibit that you won't want to miss. Well, thank, thank you. you so much, Dr. Self, for joining us this morning. Thank you for inviting me, Christine. Well, we have more stories for you here on New Day. More celebrities are, ex are accepting the viral hand wash challenge. So we'll be back after these messages. Do keep it here on CNN Food. Every grain of rice is so valuable. It's impossible to not have rice here in the Philippines. That particular love reflects on the actual flavor of the rice as well. The characteristic of heirloom rice is talagang very attractive. Here we're trying to use rice more in a different way. You know, the heirloom rice will grow and it will become a treasure from the Philippines. It is the cornerstone of Filipino cuisine. Show. Thank you for staying until six, uh, from 6 a.m. until 7.30. Andre Felix, Ria Tanwaterila, Christine jacobson Des, and James Deacon. Just be safe, everybody. Yes. Just, uh, you know, the, 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 the usual so, reminders, wash your hands with soap at least 20 seconds. Um, that's, uh, what, what's your go-to song? I went with, uh, you'll see. You'll uh, you have? Yeah. You have? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 30 seconds. Welcome back. Not only are travel and school affected by the coronavirus pandemic, even some churches announced changes in the observation of the Lenten season. In a letter to their clergy, Malolos Bishop Denis Villarojo announced that they will not be obligating their faithful to attend Sunday Masses on March 15 and 22nd. He says although Masses will proceed as scheduled, church attendees should either watch them on TV or Facebook Live instead.
The Trade Department reiterates its warning against those who will hoard basic goods among the amid the coronavirus pandemic. Our Lois Calderon reports on the penalties awaiting hoarders. Alcohol bottles and sanitizers have been flying off the shelves as consumers rush to supermarkets over coronavirus concerns. The panic buying has prompted the government to limit purchases of these sought-after items. For now, it's just two bottles per buyer. Okay. Regardless of size, so if you choose the 60 ml, dalawa lang bote. Kung gusto niyo yung 500 ml, dalawa lang rin na bote ang pwedeng pili ng isang tao. But sa lahat ng disinfectants in bottle, sold in bottles, dalawa-dalawa lang. The move is backed by retailers and manufacturers who met with the Trade Department on Wednesday. A price freeze took effect this week and will be good for 60 days. It covers staples like canned fish, noodles, bottled water, bread, milk, coffee, soap and salt. Rice, eggs, sugar and medicines are covered too. Sardine manufacturer Mega Global Corporation says there's enough canned sardines in grocery stores and supermarkets. Its Zamwanga factory produces 2 million cans per day. Right now, it's safe to say that our brand, Mega, has around two to three months inventory in terms of finished goods. So it's safe to say that uh, sardines would be in the, in the shelves for the next two to three or four months of the Filipino uh, supermarkets. I, I encourage everyone not to hoard and not to panic by. Amid the chaos, Malacanang's voice rings out loud. It's a mix of assurance that there'll be enough supply and a warning against those hoarding goods and selling them at a steep price. Any one person caught na mag considered profit eating kasi it's a crime pagka tinaas nila above the prevailing price now will be punished. Merong penalty yan of 5 to 15 years and a fine of 5,000 to 2 million pesos. So we're, we're being very strict now kasi we're under a state of emergency, public health emergency. We cannot allow people to take advantage of the current situation. Lois Calderon, CNN, Philippines. Philippine stocks suffered a steep decline as it settled below 5,800. This left investors more worried over the coronavirus pandemic impact. It's also triggered a market halt after more than 11 and a half years. To avert further losses, the Philippine Stock Exchange imposed a 15-minute trading interval as shares dropped by 10.33% to 56.5697. The PSE said it first tapped the so-called circuit breaker in October of 2008. Now, this was when the global financial crisis happened. Local shares slightly picked up upon closing at 57.36, plunging by 12.76. Mining and oil firms suffered the worst in the market. BDO's Jonathan Ravella says the downtrend doesn't stop there as coronavirus fears loom over the industry. A lot of concerts and other entertainment events are being postponed or cancelled, most of them due to the coronavirus, but not all of them. CNN's David Daniel explains in the Hollywood Minute. Celine Dion has postponed concerts in Washington, D.C. and Pittsburgh for health reasons, but it's not what you think. The singer's official Facebook page noted she had persistent cold symptoms and her doctors instructed her to rest, but, quote, after testing her, the doctors concluded that her virus was not related to COVID-19. She's expected to resume her Courage World Tour March 24th in Denver. I think it's important to have all people represented in our entertainment. John Boyega is representing. The Star Wars star has made a deal with Netflix to develop non-English language films about West and East Africa. Boyega says his production company, Upper Room, will partner with the streaming service on original feature films focused on African stories. No one has the correct idea of perfect timing, but... Jason's out, Woody's in. Woody Harrelson is taking over one of the lead roles in The Man from Toronto. Statham had been in talks to star with Kevin Hart in the action comedy about a deadly assassin and a perpetual bungler who are mistaken for each other. Filming is set to start this spring with a planned release date of November 20th. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. 
Now you all remember that 70s hit, I Will Survive, right? Right? Uh, well, there you it, go. I have no idea what you're talking about. Sing it. I will survive. First, I was afraid. I was okay. Well, well, hold on. Let me, well, it originally served as the ultimate breakup anthem, but it now serves a different meaning because of the coronavirus pandemic. Mm. And Gloria Gaynor, the disco queen behind the smash hit, is taking the lead against the global pandemic. Gaynor uploaded her take on the hand wash challenge on social media. And in the post, she says it only takes 20 seconds to survive. Here's a look. She left the faucet running, though. You're supposed to turn it off when you wash your hands, yeah. right? Okay. Anyway, the best weapon against the COVID-19 pandemic is literally in the palm of our hands, and we'll never tire of showing you how to use it properly. This time, it's Andre's turn Woo to show us First, how it's afraid. done. <laughs> Let's watch, watch this. this. Pinky Whip, I accept your challenge. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Challenging you, you, right. you, you. Okay, we all right. accept. You, should, we accept. you yeah. should all be doing that. I, I don't know what. I mean, I've, I've got a list. I've got a quick list of songs here. There's love Hold on, on no, the no, no, Let her let oh. finish. <laughs> Okay, go, go, go. Just want to remind our viewers, <laughs> okay. do share. share. You too, Tito James, uh, share your videos on social media at CNN Philippines and use the hashtag hand wash challenge. Of course, uh, before we go, I also want to say that throughout the day, we will continue to clarify yeah. exactly what President Duterte uh, meant last night regarding our community quarantine. And we will be getting different voices for government throughout the day, throughout the newscast to find out more, get more details, clarify more the many guidelines. questions. Many questions. Yes. Still, yes. There yes. You go. Yeah. Right. Especially about land uh, transport. A lot of questions coming in Absolutely. about that. Okay. So, so stay tuned to CNN Philippines and wash your hands. There you go. And that's it for us this Friday. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Christine Jacobson Dejas. You guys back on Monday, 6 a.m. I'm Andre Felix. See you again next time. I'm James Deacon. And I'm Maria Tanwa Cotrilla. Join me at the top of the hour for another look at this morning's biggest stories. Enjoy your morning. Have a great day. So what's up?